Welcome back to Fox Sports Live. I'm Kenny Florian here with UFC light heavyweight champ John Jones and Daniel Cormier. As you just saw, things got heated between these two at a media event in Las Vegas Monday morning to promote UFC 178. They have since flown to L.A. for this interview, but were asked to be separated. John's with me. Daniel's upstairs in our newsroom. So here we are. John, let's start with you. You two have been going back and forth for a little while. Things have finally boiled over. What happened between you two? How did things get so crazy? Uh, you know what? Um... Before I even get into the story, I want to start by apologizing to uh, quite a few people. I want to apologize to MGM Grand uh, Casino. Uh, I want to apologize to the fans at home who had to see that. Uh, I want to apologize to Dana and Lorenzo Fertitta. Um, basically, what happened was, uh, you know, we were, we were at the press conference earlier. Uh, it's Conor McGregor and, and his opponent, they get in each other's face, pretty close to each other, pretty heated. Uh, the atmosphere in the room was just pretty thick. I looked over at Cormier, and I could tell by his face that he felt, you know, he was feeling it emotionally. Uh, so I knew it was going to be a heated stare down. Uh, right away, me and Daniel, we meet in the middle of the octagon, and no one stopped. Usually there's a little distance between fighters. I walked right up on him, he walked right up on me. I put my chin down, and our faces touched um, at that moment, which, is, which happens all the time. I mean, Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva darn near kissed, you know what I mean? <laughs> So it happens all the time. Um, I just figured it was going to be a great photo op. It was going to get the fans really excited. I did not expect to get hit in the throat. Uh, when I got hit in the throat right away, um, I reacted off of a sure instinct. And uh, as you can see, I ended up getting pulled off of them. All right, DC, is this, is this what happened? Is this a case of two just alpha male fighters going at it? What happened here? Well, for me personally, it was, it was kind of surprising because when – John initially walked up in the back. You know, we shook hands. I introduced him to Selena. Uh, I, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect uh, with w going into this deal. But uh, after the interaction in the back, I figured it would be pretty cordial. And then all day, you know, we're doing interviews and we're kind of doing our thing at the opposite end of the N MGM Grand. And then when we get up on the stage, he comes up up to me and he gets very close and and uh, he hits me with his forehead. Um, I've said time and time again, um, there is not a man walking this earth that will get into my face, put push, put his head on me and push me forward uh, without me actually reacting. Um, I like like John did, you know, he apologized for our actions. We should never behave in that way. There are a lot of people that look up to us and um, admire us for what we do in the octagon and outside of the octagon. Uh, we've both shown to be uh, uh, smart, professional guys outside of the cage. But with that being said, I can say uh, 100 times, uh, if a person does that to me, I'm going to react in the same exact way. You see that? I don't, I, I don't, I don't want anyone touching me. I don't come to a stare down to be touched. We are going to fight in September. Uh, I know he says it happens all the time. That's never happened to me. I don't want to be involved in that. I don't want to be touched. I don't want another guy's head against mine uh, pushing me forward. And, and I'll, I think it's disrespectful, and I'm not going to stand for being disrespected. You know, and that's where I would have to disagree. I mean, the video is very viral now, and you can see um, me and Daniel, we met each other halfway. I don't feel as if I initiated this thing at all. Uh, he walked up to me. Um, I walked up to him, and our heads ended up touching. Uh, what I did not expect was... Uh, the, uh, the chop to the throat, and uh, as you well, see, I had to deal with that. Did, did either of you guys get injured at all during the altercation? You're good, DC? No, I'm fine. L listen, we've done countless interviews, and <laughs> his, uh, his um, take on the situation has changed constantly. Uh, before he actually admitted that he put his head down onto me and pushed me. And maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong in, in thinking that he headbutted he head me and pushed me with his head. I did But not. he admitted, well, okay, but then you admitted to saying that you put your head down into me because I'm shorter, so to go eye to eye, you had to put your head down. Well, when your head down, when you push your head down to go eye to eye with me, John, I am telling you, it nudged me. That's why you got the reaction. I am that I am telling you, John Jones. That sounds bad. That's why you got the reaction. So whether or not that is how you intended it to come off, that is how I took it. You cannot control how I take things uh, in that situation. Daniel, me and you met right in the middle. I wasn't stopping. You weren't stopping. We no, we weren't. We, and that, exactly. We stopped once our heads made contact. Yeah, John. I'm okay. Okay, John. Your head comes forward, but it's very clear your head you know comes this, forward. This is a very minuscule thing to talk about, to argue about. Uh, well, well, DC, again, so you guys are going to fight September 27th, as you said. Does this fire you up that much more? Uh, are you that much more fired up here to fight John Jones now? 
I don't need any more motivation to fight the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. You know, I was already motivated for my opportunity to become the champion. Um, it's upsetting, you know, because I've worked very hard in my life and in my career to get to where I am today. Um, and to behave that way and for it to go and, and be spread as fast as it has, it, it's, it's sad, you know, because at some point I'm going to have to explain this to my kids. Uh, I'm going to explain this to my son. Um, my family, they're watching this. You know, my mom has to see this. And um, I'm sure she's not proud of it, you know. So there's some, as much as it disappoints me to do this in front of fans and people uh, that support, support me in mixed martial arts, I have to go back to my family and my mom. And, and, and at some point when my kids are old enough to understand this, I'm going to have to explain to them how their dad was on national television uh, acting, uh, acting out of character. John, are you that much more fired up to face this guy? You know, I'm, I'm uh, very fired up to face Daniel Cormier. You know, me being in the position that I am, I've, I've, I've fought for many world titles. And uh, to be in my position, it's important to always find things to motivate you, yeah, to always to have something to light that fire under your butt. Um, facing a new opponent and uh, Daniel Cormier, it was, a, it was a great gush of excitement for me and, and a newfound motivation for me. Um, but this, this gives me a feeling of... Uh, of it being almost like my first title shot again. Uh, there's certain characters that you just cannot afford to lose to. Uh, Chell Sonnen, uh, Rashad Evans, uh, you know, my first shot against uh, Mauricio Shogun Hua. These are some of the fights where uh, my motivation was just at an all time high. And uh, after this situation, I, I couldn't imagine not coming out with my belt. So this is a must win situation. This is exactly the fire that I needed. And sure enough, people expect some very malicious, violent things that happened the night of September 27. All right, well, uh, fired see, up John and Jones. And that's actually, DC. And that's actually, but that's actually the beauty in it. You know, he said um, his, the motivation where he was most motivated was in his very first title fight. Well, it's my very first title yes, fight. So good. that's my motivation, John. Good. You know, that's my motivation. Uh, good. You can say that there are going to be malicious things happen in September 27th. Yes. Hey, I be. embrace that. I, I embrace that. I bring it, too, bring it to me. Absolutely. Meet me in the center you know, of that octagon Daniel, and let's you fight. You know that I am going to bring that to you. Then let's uh, meet in the octagon I, and fight, I, John Jones. I, you know that I am going to bring that to you. I'm going to do everything in my and my power to make sure you never forget the night you stepped in the eye to God with me. And, 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 and you know what's going to be this year's sad reality is that what's everything that? in your power will not be enough because I'm still going to beat you. D we'll DC, see. Uh, I want to just we clear a few see. things up. You know, uh, there are some accusations that uh, John Jones' manager, Malky Kawa, uh, you know, may have hit you. It, it didn't seem like that to me when I saw the video. It seemed like he was just trying to hold you back. Uh, is, that, is that what happened? I saw him. I saw him, but everything was moving so fast that um, initially I thought he did. I, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know looking at the footage. It doesn't seem like it. It's not something that I would expect him to, uh, uh, to do. I've met him uh, on multiple occasions. I saw him once with his daughter. He seemed, he's a, seems like a very nice guy. Um, today he was very nice to me. So um, it's not something that I would expect him to do. But um, when emotion was running high, Maybe I did think that he did it, but as I look back, I, I don't know. I got a message from one of the officials from the UFC that he wanted to uh, uh, personally say that he didn't do it, and um, that's good enough for me, you know, so uh, whatever. You know, it's, yeah. it's not a big deal to me. Now, it, it looked like you threw a shoe at one point uh, during the melee. Is that what happened? Yeah, man, you know, things were just going, going crazy. You know, I, uh, I did. Uh, again, that's not something I'm proud of, but, uh, you know, I, you know, throughout the whole thing, you know, there's a whole bunch of security. Uh, they threw us off the stage. Um, you know, John and I are on top of each, you know, he's on top of me, uh, trying to hit me. Uh, I'm holding him and, and trying to hit him. So, you know, it's a very emotionally charged situation uh, that it, it wasn't over. You know, you cannot expect two guys uh, that want to get at each other that much to just let it go uh, immediately after. You it's know, cool. and, and this, took, this took a long time to cool down, you know, as... As right now we're on this interview, uh, I, I could have done this interview next to him. I mean, I, I don't know what would have set it off. It could have been a, a minor thing, and we would have started fighting in there. But we've calmed down. I know I have. But um, it, right in the aftermath of it, it didn't stop. And, and if, if in within the next couple of hours we would have got around each other, uh, seeing him today, uh, uh, you know, he, he won't accept anything, and I'm not going to either. So we probably would have got after each other again. So... 
Um, yeah, I did. It was it was it was a uh, it was very emotionally charged situation. And and um, when when the when the emotion is that high, you can't just switch it off because it takes a lot to get to that point. Well, to go back on, on the Malky Cowell situation, mm -hmm. Malky and I we've been working together for just under four years now. Me and Malky are like brothers. Um, I can guarantee you that Malky did not uh, hit Daniel Cormier. We talked about it several times. We watched the video several times, and that's exactly, uh, that did not happen. Uh, what you saw in that video is someone grabbing Malky's arm, and Malky ripping his arm um, off of that person and, uh, and pulling Daniel from under me and out of the situation. So just to clear the record on that, Mal Malky did not hit you, Daniel. All right, that's definitely what it looked like. All right, well, Kirk Hendrick, the UFC's chief legal officer, released this statement on the incident. We expect more from our athletes, especially these two gentlemen who are very well trained and highly educated professionals. Their actions were clearly a violation of the UFC's code of conduct. There are going to be ramifications whether you're the champion or if this is your first fight in the UFC. There are going to be ramifications from the UFC for these actions. And uh, John, UFC President Dana White sent this tweet right after it happened. I just landed in Bora Bora for my first vacation, and while it's, it's in, for a little while, first vacation a little while, and it's starting off perfect. What are your thoughts on these tweets? You know what, I, uh, I really- Has I, Dana reached out to you at all? Or? Dana hasn't reached out to me. Lorenzo Petita called me and he, uh, he asked me what happened, and I basically told him the situation, and I told him, you know, I've been in many stare downs. Uh, I've witnessed many stare downs. I did not get, expect to get uh, hit in the throat. Um, and I told him as a man, um, you know, champion or not, um, th that's not gonna stand. I, I could see it now, if I, if I would've allowed him to hit me and not retaliate it. Uh, there would've been a lot of people who respected me for walking away, but there would've been a lot of people who would've called me a coward and called me a wuss for allowing that to happen. Uh, outside of what anyone else thinks, um, I couldn't allow that to happen. And I told uh, Lorenzo Fertitta, um, if anyone ever hits me, um, then I'm gonna do what I have to do uh, to protect myself. Um, but for the most part, you know, a, a lot of people uh, are loving this. A lot of people are eating it up. I mean, I've, I've had the, the Indianapolis Colts call me and all these football players call me and just people from all over calling me so excited, so much more anxious to see the fight. Um, so in, in a way, it, it was a good thing. Uh, in, 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 a, in a very opposite way, it was a terrible thing for the UFC. Um, and that's why I, before I said anything today, I just wanted to apologize for the people who didn't appreciate that type of entertainment. All right, DC, uh, I'm not sure if you saw John's Instagram account. If not, take a listen to uh, what he had to say immediately following the altercation. Yo, DC, you suck. You suck. You gonna chop me over the neck and get beat up. And I had you on your back. What? In like six seconds. You suck. You felt so weak. Daniel, your reaction? <laughs> well, that's obviously the first, that's the first time that I, I saw that. Um, Truth is, you know, I'm, I'm a guy, you know, I'm a realist. You know, as I said, I threw the shoe at John uh, because emotions were high. Emotions were high on his side, too. So I cannot expect um, behavior from, from him that I didn't show that type of restraint. Um, with the shoe, um, with me pushing him because I felt like he moved, moved my head, him responding because as a man, he can't allow someone to push him in the neck. I mean, I cannot expect behavior from John that I'm not willing to show myself. So uh, that, um, that, um, that video is just, I attribute that to him uh, still being very high emotionally. But with that being said, if that is an indicator of the fight, that seems pretty silly considering there were so many people involved, uh, so many people holding us back and so hold, many hold people involved in the situation. It's, holding me it's, too. I had a ton of people holding me too. But that is not an indicator of the fight. So and if DC, that is real what you quick, think, what is going to happen in the fight? What does happen between you and John Jones? What happens? I'm going to win, Kenny. Like, I mean, I am going to win. Like, I guarantee you I'm going to beat this guy. This guy is not going to beat me. He's fought a lot of great fighters. But at the end of the day, this is a new sport. He has not never fought anyone that has competed at the level that I have competed at for the time that I've competed my entire life. Yes, Mauricio Shogun, who is a great fighter. All these guys are great fighters, but all these guys started fighting in MMA. This is MMA. This sport has been around since the 90s. I've been competing in a sport that is man's oldest sport at the highest levels for a really long time. He's never fought a competitor like me, and he's going to realize that when we step into the cage on September 27th. Hey, I respect John Jones a ton. I respect him for his accomplishments athletically. 
I respect him for getting to where he's got outside of the octagon. I do respect John Jones as a champion. That's why I wanted to jump at this opportunity. That's why I'm going to train harder and prepare better than I ever have in my entire life so that I can go in there and give myself the best chance to become the UFC champion. So this doesn't motivate me. The fact that he is as good as he is is what motivates me to try to go in there and beat him. So, uh, you know, whatever. This is, the, I mean, a street fight. We got into a street fight. I haven't done that in 14 years since I got out of college. I mean, I think it's silly and petty, but uh, that's the best thing about our, our, our sport is that... Is that John and I can do years for me. <laughs> John and I can John and I can do stuff on Instagram. We can poke fun at each other to, on Twitter. We can build a fight. But at the end of the day, they are going to lock the cage with him and I in it and we get to settle our differences and we're not going to do it once. We're going to do it twice because I'm going to beat him in September and then we're going to fight again at the beginning of the year and then he'll realize that he never wants to get locked in the cage with me again. All right, John, last word. What happens on September 27th? <clears throat> you know what? I uh I've fought many great fighters before. I've fought many great wrestlers before. I think there's a huge difference between a, a great wrestler who's learned how to throw a few punches and kicks and a martial artist. I embody the spirit of a martial artist, the heart of a martial artist, what it truly means to be a martial artist. I'll give up my arm, I'll give up, I'll give up an eye, I'll give up a broken a toe, it doesn't matter. There's nothing you can do to stop me, Daniel Cormier. There's absolutely nothing you can do. You but can what, take, you but, can, please let but, me talk. But please, what did, did what, I did not, but what, did, what, I, did, hold did, on, did John, I just I, let I you just talk? Did I just let you talk? I just got to ask you a question. I just want to ask you a question. I just let you talk? Where do you draw? What do you, you draw? But just I just let you talk? What do you draw that makes you believe that you can stop me? Like, what is it? I just let you talk. Let John finish real quick. You said you could take me down 100 times out of 100 times, right? And that's what you're going to do, right? I challenge you to get me down five times in that five round fight. You won't be able to do that. Maybe you will get me down once. I believe in my whole heart that I'll get you down too. But the difference is when I get you down, your face will open up. There is nothing you can do to stop me from coming at you round after round with the most malicious techniques I know. You will lose this fight, Daniel Cormier. I want you to believe it. Every ounce of training you put in leading up to this fight will be a waste of your life. <laughs> DC, quick response. There, hey, that is great. I'm glad that he feels that way. This is what I want. I want a dog fight. If you can bring a dog fight to me, please do it. I, I, I live oh, for this. Please, please you, do you, it. You've seen me. Please do one. it. You know how I react when it gets tough. I, and, and you know what? And I have, I have praised you for that. But, good. again, I've never had to show that because nobody can test me in that okay, way. Yeah, it's going good. to look easy. Good. It is, oh, it's yes. going to look easy. No one has and people are going to be you scratching have their head. You not fought on anything like me. You will see the difference you, do, you, between, do you not think that listen, I would do this? Do listen, you not think that, you John, will see the difference between John, all these old watch the fighters you've been beating. John, these, these, the, Daniel, listen, you have, a, you have a sense of security beating Dan Henderson a guy who's almost 50 years old, uh, freaking Patrick Cummins, a guy who's only 4-0, uh, uh, Josh Barnett at the end of his career. Man, you have not tasted what I have to offer, and you will see it. You will John, see it. do you not think that I would do the same thing to all those guys that you beat that you did? Honestly, do you really no. believe Honestly, that? I cannot sit here and say you would dominate the competition that I have faced the way I have faced them. Okay, all John. All right, guys. Daniel Cormier, John Jones, thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show. And, uh, Thank you very much. This has been another edition of UFC Fighting Wars. This gigantic fight just got bigger.